Hey, it's Jared. In this video, I'm going to compare the M4 iPad Pro. This is the 13 inch with the MacBook Air 13 inch laptop. And this is the M3 model. Why am I comparing these? Well, first of all, I have been trying to make an iPad work in my workflow since the iPad first came out. It was a novelty at first, having a bigger screen that you can load apps and see more and all that good stuff. Then when the iPad Pro came out, having a amazing XDR display and great graphics in a tablet, something that was lightweight, very mobile, that definitely was nice to have as well. But when it comes to actually using a device, what is the most productive device and what is the best option? That is the question that I'm asking for myself because I'm getting a little tired of trying to find reasons to justify an iPad Pro when really I seem to be faster on a traditional laptop. So I'm going to compare these devices. So maybe if you are in the same boat as me, you're trying to decide, do I go with an iPad or do I go with a traditional laptop like the MacBook Air? I hope that this video answers a few of those questions. Real quick, my YouTube analytics show me that 97% of you that are watching this video are not subscribed to the channel. So please click that subscribe button. Not only does it help support me and the channel, but it helps the YouTube algorithm as well. So please click that subscribe button. Let's jump back into the video. So first of all, let's talk about performance. Now this is an M4 chip. This is the newest iPad Pro M4. It's an expensive device. And what we have over here is a MacBook Air with the M3 chip. Now I did spec this device out a bit. It has the highest performance option. It also has the most RAM and it has one terabyte of storage. And so as far as this MacBook Air goes, you can't really get any faster of a MacBook Air there than what I have right here. So when it comes to the actual performance of the chip that's in these devices, the chip both is a CPU and a GPU together in one chip. And so the performance is handled on a single chip, whereas older computers had those things separate. On Apple Silicon, it's one big chip that handles all of it with individual cores that are on that device. And so the main differences here, besides of course the fact that one is a laptop and one is a tablet, is that this is an M4 and this is an M3. So M4, newest, latest, and greatest technology, M3, it's about a year old now. So let's first look at the single core CPU performance. Keep in mind we have both CPU and GPU, and we'll look at both of those numbers. Our CPU single core performance on the MacBook Air is 3,141. Then the multi-core, which is a score for utilizing all of the cores that are available on that chip, is 12,018. Now, if I jump down and look at the scoring for the M4, on a single core, we have 3,750. So 3,750 compared to the 3,141. So there is a performance jump there. That's a decent performance jump between these two devices for single core. Now, if we look at multi-core, we have the 12,018 on the MacBook Air, and we have 14,571 on the M4. And so while that is a decent jump in the performance numbers, I don't see that as being that huge of a jump when it comes to everyday usefulness or usability of that performance. And so those numbers aren't drastically different for me. Most software is probably gonna use a core here or there. Only when an application really needs to utilize a lot of performance will it start to use multiple cores. You might have one application using one core while another application is using another core, something like that, depending on what you have running and the needs of the software that you have running. But chances are you're not really going to notice much of a difference when it comes to CPU performance between these two devices. Now let's talk about the GPU. The GPU is what handles graphics. It handles graphics when it comes to what's loading on your screen, what you see, everything that's loaded visually, but more so it also handles video games, movie playback, photo editing, video rendering. All of these different types of tasks rely heavily on the GPU. On the MacBook Air, we have a score of 47,932. Let's just round that up to 48,000. Now on the M4 iPad, we have a score of 53,713. We could be generous and round that up to 54,000. And so we have a difference of about 6,000 there, which I also don't see that as being that big of a difference between these two devices. There's not a lot that you're going to do on an iPad that will max out the GPU unless you are editing video and rendering out video. You might max out the GPU. Most games are not even maxing out the GPU when it comes to the needs that those games have for performance. 
And so in looking at the benchmarks between these two devices, I don't really see that big of a difference between these two devices as far as performance goes. But these are just numbers, these are just scores. What does it really feel like to get work done on these devices? Well, the main difference is gonna come down to the form factor of the device and the operating system and the way the applications operate within the operating system. There is a difference here. This has Mac OS, this has iPad OS, and there's a difference in how applications run there. Mac OS operates like a traditional operating system. You can have multiple windows, you can drag them around, you can have multiple screens, you can kind of do whatever you want and customize things to your liking on a device like this. The iPad is a bit different. Even though iPad OS has gotten to be a lot more like a traditional operating system, it's still far from that. It's mainly designed to have one application opened at a time. So when I open up an application, it's going to go into almost a full screen mode. And then if I wanna have another application opened next to it, then I have to drag out an application and then put it into a multi-window mode where I have windows on top of each other that are not easy to manipulate and move around. I have to resize them and then they kind of work weird. It's not a fast experience. I can more easily drag windows around and move things and organize things the way that I want them on Mac OS than I can on iPad OS. I definitely love the fact that iPad OS has the ability for multiple windows and I can move them around and all of that stuff, but the little handles on the ends and the moving around of the cursor with the trackpad or trying to do that with your fingertip is just more time consuming. And I find myself having to move things around. And if I wanna have multiple applications opened, then I have to have groups of applications open together, or I have to have full screen applications open and I have to swipe between those. Whereas it's just not as hard to do that on Mac OS. And on Mac OS with Stage Manager enabled, I can just quickly get access to all of my applications, whether I want them individually on a screen or a couple of them on a screen at a time. It's very easy. And it is easy to do that also on an iPad, but you have to get all of those configured and set up and it takes more time. And then I find that whenever I have to restart the iPad for something, then all of those are gone and I have to recreate all of them. Whereas the Mac just does a better job of remembering where all of my screens were. Now these devices are designed to be portable. I have computers that I plug into bigger monitors. So when I need a bigger display, I have that taken care of. These devices, I'm probably not gonna be plugging into a larger display. Now, I have done that. I have plugged the MacBook Air into a larger display and I have plugged the iPad 4 into a larger display. It's great to have a larger display to use these devices, but on a MacBook, you can close that and put it off to the side and use your bigger display as your primary display, not having to use the laptop top at all. I can have a Bluetooth keyboard and, and mouse attached to it and just put the MacBook off to the side, not even paying any attention to it, just a cable plugged into my monitor. On the iPad, it's not that simple. I have to have the iPad open in order for it to work with the computer monitor. And then it's also just like having another iPad, except now I can't touch the screen. I have to use a mouse and the mouse kind of goes and magnetically attaches to different things. And I know I can turn that off, but then it makes it harder for me to find those little edges and get to them. And I have to say, like, I think there are a lot of things that are built into iPad OS that are really neat. When you see them happen, it's like, yeah, it's that Apple magic. It just looks really cool. But when it comes to using the device for an extended period of time, I find myself slower when I'm going between windows, going between different applications on an iPad than when I'm on a MacBook Air. There are also a lot of little things that slow me down that aren't typically noticeable until I am trying to perform that task. So for example, I'm in Adobe Lightroom over here on this device and I can just select all by hitting Command A and select all of these images using a keyboard shortcut. If I come over here, I try to do Command A, it does nothing. And so I think, okay, well maybe I need to like Command click or something, no, that just opens a photo large. Maybe if I like long press, oh, okay, well that works. Then can I do command A? No, command A still doesn't work. So I'm looking around like, okay, how do I select all? How do I select everything that's in this folder? 
okay, I have to check this checkbox, which is not immediately noticeable, but it's a multi-step process here in order to select multiple images. Because what I'm wanting to do here is an image export test. This would be something that I typically do, which is edit a lot of images on my mobile device and then render them out so that I can share them with my client. It's one of the things that I tend to do on one of my smaller devices is edit photos. I like to load a bunch of photos and then go sit somewhere comfortable and edit those photos. And so when it comes to screen resolution, what is the difference between these two devices? Well, first of all, this is the M4 with the nano texture display. So as far as reflections and stuff like that, I'm, I'm not gonna have to deal with reflections as bad on the iPad because it has that nano texture display. I don't have that over here on the MacBook Air. But what there is is a resolution difference between these two devices. The M4 iPad Pro has a much higher resolution device as far as the pixels per inch go. And so when I zoom in on an image and I wanna look close on an image and look at the finer details, I can see a lot more detail on the M4. When I'm zoomed in here, pretty much looking at about the same part of the image on both of these, I can see a lot more detail on this device than I can on this. These images look a little bit soft as I zoom in because I'm going beyond the resolution of the display. The image itself has more than enough resolution. It was taken with a camera that shoots 50 megapixel images. And so with this image, I know that there's resolution there, but because this is a lower resolution device, I'm not seeing as much. And so that's the main difference that I find and why I keep chasing iPads, especially the iPad Pro, is because it has such a great high resolution display and the Air does not have the same high resolution display. And that's an issue that I run into between these two devices is this is much more pleasing to look at. High resolution images are much more vibrant and there's much more detail there to be seen. The iPad's display is also just a smidge taller, which gives just a little bit more room for the user interface. And you also lose a little bit of that on the Mac because of the persistent menu bar across the top of the screen, which I know I can get rid of if I go into full screen mode, but it doesn't make applications any taller because it still preserves all of that space up there so that the notch isn't cutting into the applications that you're using. The iPad Pro just simply doesn't have that. So one key performance indicator for me is the actual render performance between these devices. I have a, a group of images from a real estate shoot that I shot, and I'm gonna go ahead and select all of these, and I'm going to export them. So I'm gonna go up to the share menu and go to large JPEGs, and I'm gonna have my folder ready there, and then I'll go to the share menu and choose save copy to device. This is where there's a frustration between Mac OS and iPad OS. When it comes to saving files on a Mac, you can save them to your downloads folder easily. You can go and create folders, navigate the folder system in Finder really easily. On iPad OS, however, you have to go to the share sheet and then you have to choose save to files. And then you have to choose which location and maybe navigate around for a while. And it takes a bit of time and is kind of an annoying process using the file manager on an iPad. I just don't enjoy the process. So let's go ahead and hit export on both of these and we'll start exporting these images and we'll see what kind of performance difference we get there. Now, both of these devices have those images saved locally and so they should process and download pretty quickly. Now, looking over at the MacBook Air, it is now on image number 18, whereas the M4 iPad Pro is on image number 10. And so the MacBook is destroying the M4 iPad Pro right now as far as image rendering performance. It is now just halfway done and we are not even a fourth of the way done on the M4 iPad Pro. And so this is kind of the difference that you see just because we have an M4 chip in an iPad Pro and it performs well in benchmarks. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to result in superior performance when it comes to everyday tasks. The MacBook Air is finishing right now. It's finished. And that's 70 images that it exported or 69 images that it exported. And I'm on image number 28 right now with the M4. So I'm not even halfway done with the M4. The M3 has absolutely destroyed it. So that's one example of the performance not being what you would expect. Now let's talk about portability. Obviously with the MacBook Air, we have a device that only opens this far. It doesn't open flat. It, it's not detachable from the keyboard. It does close down and is rather slim, really nice slim device. Both of them are about the same thickness. I'm not seeing 
a whole lot of a thickness difference here between both of them. If I line the edges down up on the bottom, you can see that the laptop, the MacBook Air, is a little bit longer here, but the iPad, let me line up this edge over here in the corner, with the iPad with the keyboard case is, is wider in this direction. Because of the keyboard case and the hinge and everything down here, it hangs off the edge over the edge of the M3 MacBook Air. And so you can kind of call that a draw, I would say. If we took all of this usage here and piled that up on this end, they'd probably be about the same size as far as devices go. And when I hand hold these, so when I'm holding these, I can't really tell much of a difference in weight between the two either. They both feel pretty close to the same as far as weight. The M4 iPad with the case maybe being just a little bit heavier than the M3. I don't have a scale that I can weigh these on, but I would have to guess that the M4 iPad Pro 13 inch with the case is probably just a smidge heavier than the MacBook Air. So ultimately the best device comes down to how you're going to use it. And for me, I still prefer using a traditional computer, which the MacBook Air is just that. Mac OS is a better operating system for getting things done, for jumping around. iPad OS is essentially a larger, more usable, iOS. And so if there are things that you want to do on your iPhone, but just want a bigger display, the iPad is probably the best answer. But if you find yourself using a lot of different applications and needing to jump around and multitask from time to time, I just don't see how the iPad is going to get any better unless they make iPad OS just like Mac OS. I'm still holding out for that because the performance for the device is obviously there, but we're not seeing the performance in applications and also the usability of the operating system itself. So with that said, I've got links in the description below to the iPads, to the MacBook Airs. Definitely check those out. Great prices, great return policies compared to ordering them directly from Apple from the links that I provided down below to Amazon and B&H Photo. Clicking on those links also helps support the channel, so I greatly appreciate that. I hope that this video helped you out to some extent in trying to decide, should you go with an iPad or should you go with a more traditional laptop? I think for me, I'm probably going to stop spending my extra money on iPads because they just are not getting the job done for me. They're fantastic devices, they're absolutely beautiful, but they don't perform as well and they're not as usable as a traditional laptop. But I'd love to discuss that more with you down in the comment section below, so let's head down there and start a discussion. If you found this video useful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I hope to see you back in another one soon. Take care.